tons of people using this on their a7 III for pretty much everything and anything you can think of. It's such a versatile lens because it has such a, a wide focal range that's just used for so much stuff. So today I want to talk about how you could use this potentially for astrophotography. So let's talk about it. I am by no means a master when it comes to astrophotography. I know how to do it, I know the settings, the basic stuff, and that's what I want to share with you guys. Kind of like what I do with all my other videos. Share with you the basics, some good practices, good tips, tricks, things you need to know about, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. This will be a really good tutorial for you if you're just looking to get in your feet wet, not literally, uh, with the Tamron 2875, which is actually a pretty cheap lens to use for astrophotography compared to some of the insane options that you have out there. Hopefully it goes without saying, but if you don't know, you need to be in a pretty dark spot to do astrophotography. If you're living in the city somewhere, this probably isn't going to work too well for you. So you kind of need to get out of the city into more of a country environment, which is kind of where I live, so it benefits me for when I want to do these kind of photos. If you can see all that light pollution and kind of on the horizon, you can see a little bit of the city, you can see the brightness in the sky even when it's pitch black outside, you're not in a dark enough space. So go further out. A really good way to know if you're in a dark enough environment is to look up. If you see all the little twinkling stars, then you know it's dark enough and you should be good. There's actually a few apps out there that will help you when it comes to finding dark spots or areas where there really isn't a lot of light pollution. If you just go on the app store for Android or iPhone and just search light pollution, you'll probably find a few apps that will help you. And they'll give you on a map kind of where are really good areas that are really dark that don't have a lot of light pollution. Here's a couple of shots I took with the 2875 just to show you what it is that we're kind of looking and doing today. Now the Tamron is actually a pretty good lens for shooting astrophotography. When it comes to astrophotography, you want quite a wide lens. It's typically landscape style stuff that you're gonna be shooting and you want a nice wide field of view. 28 isn't the widest in the world. I personally prefer 1635, but my 1635 is an f4. f4 isn't great for low light, things like shooting the sky, nighttime stars. So the 2.8 on this is actually gonna be more beneficial to you. If you were to use an f4, you can still use it. It's just you're gonna to have to do a longer shutter speed or higher ISO and your image might suffer one of those ways. So the f2.8 of the Tamron is a good option for you to use when it comes to astrophotography. It's actually pretty cheap. Typically wide lenses that are good for low light are a little bit more expensive to come across. So here's my tips using this lens to take some nice photos of the stars. Use a tripod. It needs to be something sturdy. If you don't have a tripod, you can use anything, but you basically need to have absolutely no motion whatsoever when it comes to shooting your image. If you have a cheap tripod and it's a little bit flexible, it moves a little bit, weigh it down. Normally they have a little hook underneath, put something down to weigh it down on that hook. Uh, just makes it more stable. Any camera movement whatsoever and you might get a little bit of image blur, it's not going to be sharp, it's not going to look good and you're not going to be happy. You could use a gorilla pod if you wanted to, but gorilla pods start to get a little bit loose after you've had them a while, so it might slightly move on one of the legs and then it's going to be blurred again and you don't want that. Change your settings so that you're shooting in RAW. When you shoot in RAW, you have so much more play after the fact in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever it is that you use. You just have the ability to change so much more, so always shoot in RAW. Shoot in uncompressed. Change the settings on your camera to uncompressed. Huge file sizes, but the absolute best image quality. Turn off ISO noise reduction. There are tons of videos talking about what this feature is. I'm not gonna bore you with that, just turn it off. You don't need to use it for this. Here's a really, really big one for you. Use a self timer of two seconds. Before you take your photos, set that self timer, click the button then. You don't wanna just click your button and take the shot of the sky. Even pressing that shutter button for a split second might give you a tiny little bit of camera twitch, a little bit of movement, and now you're gonna get a little bit of blur in your photo and you don't want that. Two second delay, by the time you've pushed that button, camera stopped moving if there was any little sway there, and uh, it's gonna be a sharper image. You can go longer than two seconds, you could do 10 if you want, but you're just gonna be waiting there. and then it's gonna take the image and you could just click it, wait two seconds, and take the image. To frame and focus your shots, a big thing here, put your lens into manual mode. If you love shooting in auto mode, you're not gonna be able to do that for this. Autofocus does not like night. It cannot see, it cannot focus. If you use autofocus, I'll tell you right now, don't waste your time, it's just not gonna work and you're not gonna be happy with the image. So you have to use manual focus mode. Obviously the shot is gonna be dark when you take it and you're not really gonna know what's in your frame. The way around this is to crank your ISO to something crazy like 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, whatever you want. As long as it allows you to see what's in frame, then 
it's doing its job. You're not actually gonna be taking at that high ISO, you're just gonna be framing up your subject. You can drop it back down to whatever you wanna use later on. And then try and find a star in the sky. It's so dark, the sun's got him. Natural light problems again. Don't worry, I have a light coming soon. So use focus magnifier to pick out a star on the sky and actually using manual focus, focus on that star. If you don't know how to use focus magnifier, I'll put a little link up here that side I think. I'll put it up here and it tells you how to use it. Use focus peaking as well and highlight it as red or yellow or whatever you want and basically make the star as sharp as you possibly can. So adjust your focus so that the star looks super, super sharp. Now it's gonna be hard to kind of tell what is sharp and what isn't sharp, but you'll be able to see there's a huge difference from when it's in focus to when it's not in focus. The star will go really big and then it'll go really small. When it's small, it's normally in focus, it's normally sharp. Now you're ready to take your photo. Drop your ISO back down to what you wanna use it on. I've tested around a lot of different settings. You can go up to 6,000 ISO easily, not have any issues with noise. You can go higher than that too. It's just 6,000 is just one I used and it worked really well. You'd then use the shutter speed around four seconds and take your photo and it's gonna turn out well. But then you could also go the route of doing 2,000 ISO if you're really scared of noise and then just do a longer shutter speed, something like 12 to 15 seconds. And it's gonna get you the same thing. What I shoot and what you shoot is not gonna be the same depending on where you are, how bright the sky is, where you are in the world, all that kind of stuff settings that you're using. Everyone's gonna have a different experience, so just play around, take a few shots, get it to what you wanna use, and then know that that's your kind of baseline to play around a little bit more. Here's the shots that I took, and the settings overlaid on the top of them, just so you can see what it is that I used. Now here's a big tip for you as well using this, if you're using this at 28. Don't go any longer than I think it's 17 seconds. Now you're gonna wonder why 17 seconds? Well there's actually some math involved with this. If you do 500 divided by the focal length that you're using, that's gonna give you the maximum shutter speed that you can use. Now you're asking, well why is that the maximum that you can use? If you go any longer than 17 seconds, you might start to pick up the Earth's rotation. Your camera is stationary on the Earth, the Earth is rotating, around the universe and the stars are staying stationary. So you're starting to pick up that rotation. So the math is actually 500 divided by your focal length. That's the maximum shutter speed that you can use. So bear that in mind. If you're using a different lens, just divide it by 500, that is the maximum focal length that you can use. So there you go. Just using those basic tips, you should be able to take some pretty nice astrophotography shots, some nice shots of the sky, go about in different environments and get different shots. Just try it out. Here's a few more things that you should know about when it comes to astrophotography and shooting with the a7 III, which I'm shooting on right now. I'm not just pointing it at nothing. I'm shooting on the a7 III. With long exposure, noise reduction turned on, you're actually gonna get a little bit of a delay after you take your image. So if you take your image, your camera's just gonna go black and you're gonna be like, uh-oh, what happened? Broke my camera. Doesn't like astrophotography, no. What's actually happening is long exposure noise reduction is processing your image afterwards. So if you take a 10 second exposure, it's gonna take 10 seconds to process that image too. Same with a minute, it's gonna take a minute to process it. So just bear that in mind, you haven't broken your camera, don't worry. So I talked about the app for finding dark environments where there's not a lot of light pollution. There's actually a few apps around that you can get which use augmented reality and you, you hold your phone up to the sky and it shows you what stars are there, what galaxies you can see, what planets you can see, all that kind of stuff. There's one that I use called Night Sky. There's a paid version and a free version. Just gets rid of the ads if you want to pay for it. But it's pretty useful if you want to take shots of the Milky Way, see where that is, or planets and stuff. You can see where they are in the sky and point your camera there. So take a look at some of those apps too. They're pretty useful. Finally, you need good weather. And when I say good weather, I mean completely crystal clear skies. And it's, sometimes it's really hard because you can think and you can look up and see all the stars and you can walk around and take some shots. And then you realize, oh, actually there's clouds. Some clouds will be really thin and you won't be able to actually see them at night, like this. So you don't want to get up all dressed up warm and go out and drive in the car and have your camera stuff packed and then you get out there and take some shots and like, ah oh man, clouds again. So keep an eye on the weather. Crystal clear skies, not a cloud in the sky, and that's the way that you're going to get or be able to get the best photos. So there you go, that gives you a basis and a little bit of understanding of astrophotography and how you can use the Tamron 2875 to take some pretty nice star shots. Get out there and experiment. Try this lens out, see what you think. Let me know if you've already tried it out in the comments down below. Sometimes it's really good as well to not just take shots of the sky, but to have a little bit of scenery in them as well. Obviously with a longer exposure, you're gonna be able to light up that scenery too. So some bridges, some water underneath the night sky, mountains. There's a literally limitless 
things that you can do with this and some people that do some amazing amazing work you can get really crazy with experimenting with different things and lights and light trails and all kinds of stuff so get out there try it out make sure you take a few different shots and don't just take one shot and move on sometimes you can actually surprise yourself and you can capture things like shooting stars like this and uh, yeah just take a few shots in one spot before you move on because you never know what you might see in the sky so I hope that helped you. And I know probably a lot of you are wondering what I still think of this lens. I talked to it about it before and how I wasn't a huge fan of it. I wasn't in love with it yet. Uh, and honestly, I'm still not. I'm still, still trying it out, still thinking about it. I have some better formed opinions that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys soon. I've tried this out. I actually shot an entire wedding with this the other day. A little bit risky, uh, but it came out good. And uh, I'll be sharing my experiences with you soon, talking about that. If I taught you something today, or if you like this video, you know what to do, a little like button, thumbs up, sub, all that stuff. Leave a comment down below if you wanna chat about this lens, if you've already done some astrophotography stuff. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Yeah.